Hi everyone, I just want to follow up with a few thoughts that I had this week. Um, first of all, thank you so much for the beautiful poetry that's taken shape in this week's Moodle Forum. Um, I've been so blown away and inspired by some of your writing. So thank you again for taking this risk and sharing um, this kind of writing um, with us. It really does so much, I think, as we begin to think about our subjectivities and um, our role as educators. Thank you to Sydney, Christina, Nick, and Alan for your thoughtful roundtable conversation this week. Um, it was extremely generative and left me a lot to think with. Um, I'd like to follow up on a few ideas that have been circling around um, in the Moodle forums this week. A few of you have shared that, yes, um, the focus of Eve's Tuck's article was from a research perspective and not situated specifically within early childhood studies. Um, however, these concepts, I think, are deeply related with early childhood education, as some of you have spoke to. So what I'm curious about here is how we can gather meaning from Tuck's article and situate it within early childhood. So how might these damage-centered narratives across research, and in Tuck's example, research with Indigenous peoples, um, and issues of exclusion in early childhood education perhaps originate from so similar socio-political conditions? Um, and I think Christina spoke a little bit about uh, how our values inform pedagogy and how these values perhaps might come from certain social political conditions. So I'd like to touch on that a little bit more. Um, so let's think about the times in which we live, where capitalist mentalities and our economic climate produce values that live intimately in pedagogical practices that we see in education, where individualism, competition, production, and progress are dominant values that we see very much uh, in educational contexts. So if productivity and linear progress are central tenets of education, what happens to other ways of knowing, multiplicities that exist perhaps outside of that linear trajectory? So considering this, I encourage you to think about where discourses of damage and discourses of special needs or disability come from within this um, neoliberal linear productivity uh, kind of uh, mentality and how these social political conditions perpetuate these damage centered narratives. So in this way, I think we need to not only consider practices with individual children, but also structural systems, because our ways of thinking and our pedagogical responses exist in deep relation to these structures and what these structures then make possible. So in Thea's post this week, she highlights a piece in Eve Tuck's article um, when she draws on Grande's work. She brings an attention to the ways in which the political and economic conditions of elitist groups perpetuate damage-centered narratives by diminishing our own role in creating the stereotypes in the first place. So how then in early childhood education might we be unwittingly perpetuating these pathologizing ways of knowing children? Um, chapter 9 invites us to consider how discourses of evaluation and assessment reinforce these narratives of damage and provokes us to ask, where do these modes of assessment come from? What is the baseline that informs assessment and where does it come from? And most significantly, what does it serve? What does it reinforce? Um, so these developmental methods of evaluation do not come out of nowhere. They come from particular histories, specifically from European models of developmental progression that allude to a universal child, um, a particular image of the child that is deeply rooted in scientific reasoning from the Enlightenment period, when sci the scientific method, um, where the scientific method constructed the image of um, a de uh, sorry a dependent, ignorant child who, with proper parenting, undergoes various ages and stages and reaches specific linear developmental outcomes. And these methods extract, extract children and children's behavior from their relational contexts and dilutes multiple ways of being into a single image. So then under the guise of political impartiality, these sorts of research practices conducted largely by upper class groups of white European men proposed absolute truths about um, who a child is, 
truths that um, in many ways ignore cultural contexts and ways of knowing children that lie outside of that dominant view. Um, so lastly, again, I'd like to thank Sydney, Christina, Nick, and Alan for bringing up some of these concepts um, and specifically their point about the value of holding conversations about differences, not to propose difference as less than or something that deserves um, pity or feeling bad about, but opening spaces for multiple ways of living a life and cultivating, um, sorry, a dog just came in, um, and cultivating pedagogical spaces where there can be multiple trajectories and ways of being. That dissensus is central here um, and not to be smoothed over so that we necessarily all agree, but how we can come together in spaces of difference and stay with those tensioned um, moments. Um, so next week is reading week and there will be no online coursework, uh, only the readings for week seven. Um, so please enjoy your week and uh, I look forward to starting week seven with you.